Hi, this is a, one, the first of two videos on ethics in animals. Um, this first video covers Peter Singer's 1975 book, Animal Liberation. Um, tune in for part two that covers Tom Reagan's 1983, The Case for Animal Rights. So, um, animal liberation. You might wonder, well, why is it called animal liberation? Um, the basic answer is the book came out in, what, 1975? And at the time, people were talking about all sorts of liberation movements. There was the women's liberation movement, the black liberation movement, the gay liberation movement. There were other liberation movements. And Singer basically asked, well, what's the basis of a liberation movement? And he proposes that the basis of a liberation movement um, suggests the need for an animal liberation movement. So that's where the title came from. Um, we don't really talk this way anymore in terms of liberation movements. Um, I don't know why things changed, but that's where the title came from. So liberation movements, if you think about the range of liberation movements that there were, are all about equality. And uh, so what is equality? Um, equality isn't things being the same or even like the same rights. And we can think about why understanding equality in terms of sameness or the same rights um, isn't ideal if we think about sort of uh, say sexism, um, you know, people calling for equality for women, equality of men and women, uh, they're not seeking the exact same rights um, because um, there may be some different uh, rights, um, in particular some health-related rights. Um, same thing about um, people seeking equality for people with disabilities. Um, people with dis Some people with disabilities um, may have um, some needs that non-disabled people don't have, and so they would be seeking some different rights. So sameness can be kind of unhelpful. Singer proposes that equality is best understood in terms of the fundamental principle of equality, and this is the principle of equal consideration of interests. So if you're seeking equality, what you are seeking is that the principle of equal consideration of interests be applied to individuals of your group or a group. So um, the principle of equal consideration of interests, um, we can get at this by looking at the uh, table of contents of animal liberation. The first chapter is called All Animals Are Equal. Uh, well, what does equal mean? Well, let's look at the subtitle. Why the ethical principle or why the ethical principle on which human equality rests requires us to extend equal consideration to animals also. And this ethical principle that's mentioned here is the principle of equal consideration of interests. So um, this principle states that anybody's interests deserve equal consideration to anybody else's interests. That is, anybody else's identical or similar interests. So what's an interest? Well, an interest is in what's your somebody's interest. And uh, so what does that mean? Well, when your interests are satisfied, that's good for you. When your interests are disrespected or disregarded, that is bad for you. So uh, that's a bit about what interests are. And the principle of equal consideration of interests says that anybody's interests deserve equal consideration to anybody else's similar interests. And what does equal consideration mean? Well, the idea is roughly they are given sort of equal weight or considered equally important, or equally um, uh, important to uh, satisfy, pay attention to, concern ourselves with, etc. So, what are our interests? Well, we have many interests. Um, some interests are more profound, other interests are uh, sort of fairly frivolous, other interests are more in the middle. So, um, more profound interests that we have include uh, physical safety, staying alive. You know, if, if, if we're not alive, then we can't satisfy any of our other interests. So usually staying alive is in our interests. We have interests in food and water. We have interests in shelter. We have interests in avoiding pain and suffering. We have interests in self-determination or autonomy. Um, you know, if somebody wrongfully imprisons you or kidnaps you and, uh, you know, imprisons you, uh, they have violated your interests in many, many ways. Um, we have interest in education. We have interest in educational opportunities. 
We have interest in having um, political and leadership opportunities, the interest in sort of having a say and being a leader in our communities, in our countries, in our world. Uh, we have interests in employment and opportunities employment. You know, it's in our interests to, ha to, to have options. It's in our interest to not just be told, like, you can only be this. Um, options, opportunities are in our interests. So we have many interests. Um, Singer argues that racism, sexism, and other forms of discrimination um, violate the fundamental principle of equal consideration of interests. And that is why they are wrong. So consider a racist. A racist says, well, look, uh, it, it, the interests of my races, or the interests of my race, should be given consideration. Interests of other races, in particular that race, in particular, suppose they might say, their interests don't matter much. Their interests need not be given any consideration whatsoever. Um, so a racist violates the fundamental principle of equal consideration of interests. Singer says this is why racism is wrong. Similarly, a sexist says, look, I know that women have these interests. I know they want uh, to be able to go to school. I know they want to be able to run for office and vote and stuff like that. And I know they want to be able to be, you know, more than teachers and nurses. They want greater opportunities. But, you know, who cares? They're, they're just, they're not, their interests don't deserve equal consideration compared to ours. So Singer proposes this is why racism and sexism and other forms of discrimination are wrong. They violate the fun fundamental principle of equal consideration of interests. And this is wrong because anybody's interests deserve equal consideration compared to anybody else's interests. So um, why is that? Well, this is basically a application of the sort of um, equals should be treated as equals, like should be treated as like. Um, basically, um, somebody's interests are being denied or disrespected for irrelevant reasons. Basically saying like, look, people have, of that race, they're not like us. And since they're, you know, they're of a different race, their interests don't deserve consideration. Those people aren't of our sex, so their interests don't deserve consideration. So the problem is that um, the principle of cons equal consideration of interest is denied to these people, but for irrelevant reasons. Uh, the color of their skin or their sex or something else. So this all gets applied to animals in chapter one um, with the observation that, well, many animals have interests. What do they have interests in? Well, avoiding pain and suffering. They have interests in food and water. They have interests in housing or an appropriate environment. They have an interest in freedom of movement. Um, you know, if you sort of cage an animal, that is often not in their interests. Uh, many animals have interests in companionship. Um, their interests are frustrated when they're kept alone. Other animals are such that their interest is in being alone. So it kind of depends on the per particular animal. Um, it is plausible to think that animals have interests in avoiding death. Um, why is that? Well, they have interests in all these things. Um, you know, we, we can also have, they have interests in, um, you know, experiencing pleasure, uh, doing the sorts of things that they seem to enjoy. Um, and they can do all that only if they're alive. So it seems like they have an indirect uh, interest, at least, in avoiding death. And furthermore, um, you know, imagine somebody killed, painlessly killed a uh, puppy. Uh, you know, a puppy with... No, no medical problems or anything like that. Um, would killing that puppy be in their interests? Definitely not. So um, it does seem that animals have interests in staying alive. So are animals' interests given equal consideration to our own comparable interests? Um, are animals' interests given any consideration at all? Um, if you're familiar with how animals are treated in various ways, uh, in particular in, say, the, the, the farming industry, in slaughterhouses, in experimentation, in the fur ants, fur industry? Um, the answer here is a pretty obvious um, no. Um, 
either animals' interests are certainly not given equal consideration to our interests. Um, in many cases, it seems like their interests are given no consideration whatsoever. Well, Singer observes, this violates the e principle of equal consideration of interests, and so would be wrong, according to that principle. So here we have the word speciesism, and to be a speciesist is to deny somebody's interests, an individual's interest, on the basis of their species. Um, a, a psychologist, Richard Ryder, came up with this term, and he thought this seems similar to racism or sexism. Um, denying an individual's or group's interests on the grounds of their race or their sex, well, that can also happen, he argued, on the basis of their species. And Peter Singer helped popularize this concept. So um, suppose something uh, very bad happens to animals, um, very much not in their interests. We think, well, if that happened to human beings, that would be just terrible. But somebody says, hey, they're just animals. They're not of our species. Uh, Ryder proposed, that sounds very similar to somebody saying, you know, hey, it's just happening, you know, to, to people not of my sex. They're not of our sex, so who really cares? Uh, they're happening to, this is happening to somebody not of my race, so who really cares? Well, that's racism, that's sexism. And he thought there was a parallel with species. Um, this isn't to say they're exactly the same or anything like that. It's just a similarity. So uh, the applications here are that if the principle of equal consideration of interests is correct, and it seems to be a plausible principle, since it nicely explains why racism and sexism are wrong, um, and non-human animals have interests, then many uses of animals would be wrong, harmful uses of animals would be wrong, um, because they're speciesist, and they're speciesist because they violate the fundamental principle of equal consideration of interests. So, um, you know, the fur industry, animals in experimentation, animals used in farming, this is all contrary to animals' interests, and their interests are not given uh, any, almost any consideration whatsoever here. Um, and so this would be wrong, according to the uh, principle of equality, principle of equal consideration of interests. Um, so, uh, there's more to say here for how this applies to, gets applied to these practical issues, um, but um, the basic proposal is the principle of equal consideration of interests rules these out. So um, that's a very brief overview or a pretty brief overview on Peter Singer's Animal Liberation, and you can learn more about Peter Singer at petersinger.info. He is, uh, as this graphic says, likely the most influential living philosopher. And he uh, has written on all sorts of topics. And I hope you appreciate this introduction to animal liberation. Um, there are many other videos about him, by him, on this and other topics on YouTube. So I encourage you to check them out. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.